What's going on everyone? So what I wanna do is I wanna analyze some price action. I wanna analyze some supply and demand on the NQ futures. So what we're looking at here is a five minute time frame. Now we can see that overnight session uh, open up overnight, that pre-market session, whatever you wanna call it. Some people call it the London session. Some people call it the pre-market. But if you kind of look at the lows that we put in in the pre-market session here, that price was 15,805, okay? I want you to really remember that price. I want you to focus on this bottom orange line here, okay? So that was the initial lows that we put in. We kind of, you know, bounced off these lows, kind of trickled higher in the in the, in the pre-market here. Now, if you look at the pre-market highs, we touched a high price of 15,896, okay? That's the top orange line. So what we have essentially created here is a zone. We've created a range for the NQ. Now, as you're coming into the New York Open, this candle here, this initial red candle, the 6.30 a.m. candle, what you want to see for potential follow through is a breakout through those pre-market highs or those pre-market lows, okay? If we can't get, okay, and this is normally, you know, if we can't get that breakdown within the first 20 minutes, 30 minutes, the first hour of the market, start taking your foot off of the gas and start kind of analyzing where is price action trading at? What zones are we kind of staying in between? It was very, very early that I started telling people uh, in the Discord at Evolution Traders, stay patient, stay patient, stay patient. You know, it's not the most ideal price action. We're getting chopped up here. There's a lot of moves setting up. There's a lot of scalp moves setting up. You know, they're going in your favor for five, 10 minutes, and then they're kind of quickly retracing. Now, today is a day that where you can start to over trade. Today was a day where a lot of people could have got chopped up. Today is a day where I could see definite emotions coming out uh, and the motions more leaning towards the aggression side, right? Um, there was a point in time where, you know, I had to crawl myself out of drawdown on some trades that I was in. I just didn't like the way that the, the price action was moving. Um, you know, luckily was able to escape the day with a little bit of green there on the NASDAQ future side of things. So again, coming back to this zone here, if you kind of noticed this first initial candle, what we would have wanted to see here on the 6.35 a.m. Pacific Standard Time candle that broke over the 20 period moving average, once we got this confirmation, it, you have to think about it like this, okay? Nine out of 10 traders, we're gonna take this setup long with anticipation that we're gonna break this high price here, break this orange line and continue to run all the way into the next major supply zone, which would have put us at around 15,900, okay? Myself included, however, what you need to kind of identify here is that once we confirmed and we did touch this area, this pre-market high area, and did not close above it, that's gotta be a little bit of a red flag. Now, even though we are profitable on the position from 884 all the way up to around 897, this is about a 10 point move. Again, if you're coming into this trade, if you took this trade long with the anticipation that we're gonna have a breakout and a, that continuation from Friday's price action, more than likely you got slammed on this position back down to the short side, okay? So you can see here at 645, not only do we confirm those pre-market highs by breaking this area, however, that move was exhausted very, very quickly and immediately started to retrace. So it's at this point now, where a lot of traders tend to feel that anxiety and they tend to see their positions go from green to red very, very quickly. And then they have no idea how to handle that, counteract that and what to exactly do in that particular situation. So what we're looking at here, as we come down and we start to approach this 20 period moving average, even though I like to preach about the one bar stop, this was an aggressive one bar. So if you oversized yourself, meaning you know, you're know you in multiple mini contracts or you're in 10 15 micros this would have been a position here where you would have wanted to maybe cut at a close of and a loss of the 20 period moving average now if you're sized decently where you're playing micro contracts maybe you're playing one two three four micro contracts even though this is an aggressive stop loss if you use a one bar stop here it's not going to kill you it's not going to be the end of the world okay so if you took this long position and you did not take profits, it's okay. The move failed. It's not your fault. It's not like you did anything wrong. Um, again, this anticipation break here, setup is over the 20 period moving average. We're also trading above the 200 period moving average, which is not on my screen, but we were trading above the 200 period moving average. Um, and then we broke these pre-market highs here. This is a full anticipation to take profits here. 
that move is what you would consider a failed move. Now, again, someone who made money is going to be a hyper aggressive scalper who's going to, you know, get in, kind of take those five handles, take those 10 handles, take those 15 handles, whatever they get. And they're just going to get in. They're going to get out very, very quickly. Now, if we look at the rejection here, this reversal candlestick, we had another setup that came here short. Here would be your short position. Here would be your max pain loss on a one bar stop. Here's your confirmation and here's the flush. Now the white lines that you see on my chart, I love using these. These are what's called the linear regression channels. Um, these are definite points of, su of supply and demand. So, you know, I don't really trade off of them, but I do use them, okay? So for example, if I'm in a short position here, I'm gonna take profits into the linear regression, okay? Uh, that's how I use them. Um, again, if I was, you know, long here and we get the breakout, I'm taking profits into the linear regression. That's how I use those channel lines. And again, I use them as gauges of supply and demand. So if we're just looking at price action, you can see us come down into this linear regression. And I want to point something out here, guys. If you look at your charts, where exactly do we stop? Okay. Where do we stop? 15,805. Where did we stop in the pre-market session? 15,805 in that range, right? Give or take a few handles. Okay, so if you look at this area once, if we held this area once, an aggressive scalper, an aggressive scalper, here's another setup. An aggressive scalper could use the lows, identify that we break back into the channel level and take this long into the next area of supply, which would be your 20 day moving average. That's a little bit of a hyper scalp there. Uh, anyone looking to play that price action, okay? So again, what we're starting to see here is that we've got resistance at the pre-market highs. We've got some support at the pre-market lows. So you can see once we do come up and bounce, we come back down to the linear regression, we get another bounce, we come back down to the linear regression, we get another bounce, we break down the linear regression and look at where we stop for the second time, guys. Not only did we stop here, but this was our first initial stop here, okay? We get that aggressive bounce, we come back and back test, we get an aggressive bounce, we back test again, and look at this final five minute candle setup here into the close. So one thing that I want to point out here is that as frustrating as a day price action wise as this was, you have to identify what's going on quickly and that comes with analyzing the data. So as you're setting up your charts in the morning, take a look at the overnight session highs, take a look at the pre-market highs, take a look at the pre-market lows. If you need to mark them out on your charts, mark them out. It's going to kind of create a baseline. It's going to create a little bit of a range. And essentially we traded within a hundred point range all day. Even though we closed up 21 handles on the day, the day was essentially down a little bit, up a little bit and essentially flat. Very, very hard price action to trade. However, if we understood from the jump that this was going to be acting as a level of support, what we needed to do was play bounces back from the bottom of demand, which is inside this range, and we needed to be selling for profits in the middle of the range, okay? And as we approach the upper portion of the range, we want to be playing the short positions. This is aggressive price action trading, okay? Very, very aggressive price action trading. What, what, what I mean by that is that if you haven't been around that long and you haven't been trading aggressive like that as far as scalping, my best opinion was to be to sit out on a day like today because I can see where the emotions would come into play here. But again, you guys can also see the power of this range that we had from the overnight session, from the pre-market lows. Pre-market lows essentially held all day. We never really closed below them. Now, if we would have closed below them, I would have expected us to at least come down and back test this channel level. Again, we stayed with inside the range essentially all day. We, we respected the overnight session highs and overnight session lows essentially all day in order for us to have any kind of continuation on any type of uh, your scalp or your or your, your your day trades. We would have needed to break out of the range. Um, the only thing that one could have done today was take little baby scalps here, little baby scalps there, five handles here, 10 handles there, and that is what it is. Um, but again, that's why I wanted to kind of analyze this price action. Um, you know, it was not a good day. Um, you know, I'd love to hear how you guys did. 
tomorrow looks like we're you know we're going to be testing the top of this range here um the 15896 is something that i would look for in the overnight session into the 15940s definitely look for that move there any type of breakout right any type of breakout over this look for a back test and then you're going to want to see it hold and then take this move here going back up again if you want to play that uh in the overnight session or or into tomorrow but if you had a, a, a lot of trouble today you know don't feel bad uh the the number one thing you can do is that on days like today once you start to feel that it's choppy once you start to see that moves are failing to kind of uh continue in your favor there's only one of two things to do size down take very very small profits when you get them or just completely sit out right um you know there was no clear trend today the trend was not up it was not down you know we get a little bit here we give it back we get a little bit here we give it all back we get a little bit here we give it all back and then here we are essentially back into the you know to the same range that we started at right so that's why it's frustrating it's because when you're when you're trying to get this move here and you see it kind of go up and, you, and then it pulls all the way back down and you get stopped out right or you know for example you know you see this short play here and then you get in and then you think we're gonna break down and then it stops you out right so frustrating frustrating day what i would do on on days like this is you have to have hard hard stops meaning you know in built into your trading plan so if you lose two or three trades you got to hang it up if you lose three four five hundred bucks on the day you got to hang it up right if you're up and you're managed to be up two, three, four hundred dollars on the day, you gotta just maybe think about stopping, right? So a lot of times, you know, we go up two hundred dollars and then we look for the next trade because we want to go up four hundred or we're up five hundred and then we try to push it for a thousand. Next, you know, we give it all back and now we lose it all. Um, so make sure you guys identify these days. Make sure you guys.